In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. And the reason we're laughing is that we've just left a little note, a little audio note to the Podfly guys. Hi, Podfly guys. Uh, hi again to, oh good lord. <laughs> All of that, all of that noise was was whiskey cat standing on the. Oh, this is a bit of a car crash this week. Disaster. Yeah, whiskey, get off the keyboard. Um, anyway, you don't need to know that because they'll do it seamlessly. So I don't really know. Anyway, all is all is well. In Jesus, should we just start again? No. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we're drinking um, blue peer off blue white wine from Germany. Yes, Cheers. it's very nice. Mm. Different. Sweet, but not in a mingy kind of blue non way. Mm. Right then. Right. What the hell are we doing here? Right, this week we are going to go all kind of mushy about choosing your life. Can, can you imagine if that was the if that was the first thing you'd ever heard of the podcast? Yeah, well, it might be for some people. <laughs> Somebody's going to get that as the first one and just go, these are idiots, and just leave. Stick with it, guys. St- yeah, stick with it. It gets less chaotic, honestly. Yeah. Not much. But honestly, it. people like binge listen to these all... On a- anyway. Um, okay, so... We tend to post our adventures up on Facebook, you know, what we're up to at the Dingle, partly because, you know, that's what people do, and partly because we've got family spread all over the place and they're interested. Mm. So we write a blog and whatnot. Um, we, we post about our triumphs and our woes, um, but I guess it looks like we're having a pretty good time, really, doesn't it? Because we yeah, are. I think so. I'm, yeah, I'm really, having a good time. really happy. Mm. You know, n- not 100% of the time, because, you know, nobody is. But, and you know, you only see what people choose to show you. Ever, but I, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, but anyway, we, we do love our life. We're we're very lucky. We feel mm. blessed. Oh Jesus! No. Did you just say that? Yeah, but you know what? It is an adjective that can be used genuinely because a lot of people are like, "Oh, blessed! I'm going to the cheese shop." Actually, no, for me that would, that would be quite cool. But no, it does feel like we've got a charmed life at the moment. Oh, that sounds really fucking smug. Anyway, it does. But we're we're very happy. And we're very lucky. And we posted something. Can't even remember what it was now. It was chickens. We were lying around on the grass, being lovingly nibbled by chickens. When he says lovingly nibbled, he means, like, pecked viciously because maybe we're edible. Opportunistically pecked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and our friend Hutch commented something like... Hi, Hutch. Hi, Hutch. Uh, commented something like, what a lovely life you've created for yourselves. Which was nice. Which was lovely. And it just... It was, it was lovely the way she put it, because she didn't just say, oh, you're so lucky, which we are, we are lucky. Hmm. But it wasn't, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. it was like the way she said it was, what a lovely life you've created for yourselves. Hmm. And I just thought, it just got me thinking. It kind of resonated a bit, didn't it? It did. And it got me thinking about all, all kinds of things. Um, and also, I think that she has just quit. A job that she was that was making her miserable to do something that will not make her miserable. Excellent. Which is totally relevant to this podcast. So remember that little nugget of information. Because that's a really tough thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's a really tough thing to do. Um but yeah, so it got us thinking, you know, yes, you know, we have. We have created this life for ourselves. Um very deliberately. Because my plan and this is a little bit where Joe's gonna be like, <laughs> Joe's you're you're amazing. He just comes along for the ride with with my ridiculous, crazy ideas well, and no, hopes I they mean, don't end in a crash. <laughs> I, I I just kind of nod and and you you'd say you're gonna do six hundred things and you, you maybe do two hundred things. <laughs> so, you know, two thirds of the things I nod at never happen, so that's fine. Yeah, that's I, I'm pretty comfortable with the just nodding and waiting for the ridiculous thing that happens next. That is more true than I would like to admit. Mm. <laughs> um, but you are very patient and you are very trusting of my ridiculous ideas. Um, but one thing, one I- idea that I've always had that I don't think is ridiculous is my plan ever since I was a little girl, like a really little girl, was to, to live in a little old cottage with a bit of land and some chickens and grow my own vegetables. And that was my, that was my lifelong dream. That was where I, you know, always wanted to be. And you kind of you never really know if that kind of dream will turn out to be as wonderful as it is in your head. 
Mm. Because, you know, it might have been... Could have been a bloody disaster, couldn't it? Yeah, and also, you know, owning as much land as we do is not for everybody. It's it's quite a lot of work. It's a boatload of work. I'm aching from the weekend. Yeah, and I really appreciate our friends um, Andy and Jodie, um, you know, saying to us before we move, really think about this because they've got a similar cottage Mm. not too far away and, you know, it really is a lot of work. And I I appreciate that because we did think about it very carefully. Anyway, so that was my dream. And then I met Jo and I guess that my plan became our plan. Yeah, I mean, I've got to admit, I, I'm I'm kind of for the easy life, to be honest, which is which is not what we currently have. <laughs> yeah. But I think I'm enjoying this more than I would the the easy life. Yeah, well, that's the thing because so many people like you, you hear them say, "Oh, how do you find time to do all this stuff?" And it's like, well, it's stuff that I want to do, so you make time for it. Mm. And what would you be doing otherwise? Well, maybe I'd be in the pub, and you know, there's nothing wrong with going to the pub. We, we live opposite a pub. <laughs> <laughs> we do go to the pub. Um, and you know, maybe you'd just be watching crap on telly and again there's nothing wrong with doing that if that's what you want to do but that's not what we want to do hmm. so so we do something else so we do something else and at the moment it's create a lot of dust apparently <laughs> create a lot of dust chop down trees mm. but not live trees because i get really sad about chopping down trees um but the tree that we chopped down was like mostly ivy well the, the, the couple of acres that we've we've got here are Wooden. have been somewhat neglected for a few years so there is a boatload of work and maintenance and just clawing it all back into some semblance of order yeah we've got like you know we've got like 50 square meters of garden back at the back haven't we yeah it's crazy anyway but all that is kind of by way of of saying that our life is really fun and it's not happened by accident yes we are deliberately not being passengers yeah and that's the thing so it's kind of like that's been my plan and then we made a plan together i didn't just railroad joe into doing this she did just kind of railroad me i I checked so many times it's like are you sure you want to do this are you sure you want to do this and you're like yeah fuck it let's do it um (laughs) so but but that's kind of what struck the nerve when we read what hutch had said you know that we chose this we, we created this life for ourselves and it just made me feel really proud because we've got our dream well, my dream. I hope it's kind of your dream as well. <laughs> it's becoming that way. Yeah. Um, and because I before that, like even all the years that I wanted this life for myself, I spent so many years just reacting to stuff. It's like, oh, so you know. Going to work and doing some stuff. And... Yeah, and getting a job. And, you know, there's a, we all react to stuff all the time because you can't control everything in your life. Of course you can't. But you can control how you react to it and what you do and all the rest of it. And I did not want to just, you know, I did not want to just be bounced from one thing to another because there's reacting to stuff that you can't control and then there is setting in motion a plan that you you know to a certain extent you can control because it's like well okay this is what i want to achieve this is where i want to be how am i going to make that happen that's it it's it's not so much you draw a straight line between where you are and where you want to be you just make sure every time you collide with something you bounce off in the direction vague you know the vague direction you want to travel in yeah so you say your general movement is in the right direction rather than Rather, you know, you're not going in a straight line from here to there. No, of course you're not. You're, you're crashing around and bouncing off stuff and swerving and doing yeah. U-turns. But if you've it's got like, your eye on the prize, you kind of know which way you want to turn. Exactly. It's kind of like looking at a profit and loss graph, isn't it? It's never a straight line. It's always up and down. But the trend is, it's mm. the trend. Trends the trend is what is we're talking important. about. <laughs> trend in the direction you want to go. Yeah. Know what that direction is. Yeah. And, you know, that, that trend is not just doing this job here and that job there and reacting to this thing that happened and then that thing that happened and... You know, it's it's kind of saying, well, okay, stuff is going to happen that I can't control. But in the meantime, my main path needs to be this. So we're kind of back to your mission again, I guess. Mm. Um, same in life, it's the same in business. So are you just frogging, frogging along? Frogging along? <laughs> I like that little phrase. I made it up. Frogging along. Because it's kind of like frogs are kind of, you know, well, I guess maybe they are purposeful. Actually, frogs are quite purposeful. I, I'm lost with the frogs. When you poke them on the bum, they jump. Is that what we're getting at? They do just react to that. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to walk away, step, step quietly away from that, from, from the that analogy, from the frogging. <laughs> okay. I've literally had two sips of wine. Um, I'm quite tired. <laughs> but yeah, are you just kind of bumbling along? Mm-hmm. Maybe bumbling is a better word. And kind of reacting to everything that happens to you. Or do you actually have a plan and a roadmap and something that you're aiming for is the point of this podcast. Is That's what I'm asking you, dear listener. Do you have a plan? Do Where you are you trying to get to? And it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be an epic end of life plan. Most people do not have that. No, it could just be, what What? what did somebody call it? Just an island in the stream? Yeah, it was Earl Nightingale. River, Earl Nightingale. river people. We're, yes. I'm a river person. I, I have 
a goal and then I have another one and another one. Mm -hmm. So like for, for me, my plan was, you know, find and buy our dream cottage in the country and build the life we're living right now. And, and to do that, we needed a bunch of cash for a deposit and some more for initial work and a decent income for the mortgage and whatnot. And so we've done that and that's like awesome. Yeah. But my next plan, our next plan, is to finish the refurbishment, get the house sorted, get the garden how we want it. Which um, is another boatload of money. It's another boatload of money. <laughs> my next plan after that is pay off the mortgage, which is another boatload of money. So I've got these kind of their life goals and financial goals and they're really tied together and that's mm. really, really important. And this is why I do everything that I do in my business. And, you know, after I've done all that, after I've paid off the mortgage, I want to do some good with my money, probably for yeah. animals or business owners or humanism. or with Teenagers, you think the only way to succeed is get you know, good exams. Yeah, to think, and you know, that's Ugh. not unimportant. I, school education is so important, but it's not the only way. And yeah. I, 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 education opportunities for as many people as possible yeah. is really important to me. And after that, well, who the hell knows? But the point is that you have this goal, or I have this goal that I'm working towards, and presumably you have goals as well, and I think most of us mesh, don't they? They, they, they collide. They collide, they collide and then they spin off in opposite directions. Um, but yeah, but when I started my business, it was nothing like that. No, when you started your business, it was mostly, oh my God, I haven't got a job. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that was exactly what, when I started my business, was like. It yeah. was on the phone to you in floods of tears. Yes. I don't have a job anymore and I'm like, oh shit. Mm -mm. But um, no, to be fair, you, and you did that for a while. But then there was a definite point where you went, right, I've now seen the direction I want to travel in. Oh, no. When, I'm going to do that. When Joe says you did that for a while, it doesn't mean I just sat in the car and floods of tears for like months and went, ah, I didn't know what to do. No, but what you had I, a kind what, of reactive business, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I was reacting to everything. So it was like, you know, a client came along, I'll do that, I'll do that, I'll say yes to everything. And it's like... Yeah, shit job, good job, badly paying job, job at yeah. other end of the country, job for a twat, all kinds of things. You just went, yeah, yeah. all right, I'll do that. I jumped, you know, I, I said how high when they said jump and, you know, yeah, available you, you at all hours. You nights, you answered the phone to anybody, you did all kinds of, yeah, lots yeah. and lots of reacting. And, you know, that's that's the way a lot of businesses start, I think. And mm. because that's the way, because people don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And you don't, you know, when you first start a business, you've got very little to go on other than what everybody else is doing, which is mostly that. Apart from potentially, you know, a mortgage bill coming in three weeks time or something and you really need to do something about that. Exactly. Yeah. So it was kind of the, the same old business story for most business owners, like feast and famine and panic and disappointment and stress and woe. And, you know, oh my, I'm bouncing from one and thing to the next. an hourly rate that was, must have been just ridiculously low oh yeah and and just wondering what the hell happened it's like you know this you i kind of remember being fizzing with excitement when um mike offered me my first freelance job and it was just so exciting it was amazing that was the start of this whole Hi, thing and I'm, and I'm so grateful for yeah, that cheers, mike. um but that excitement fairly quickly fizzled out it was six months or so it was like this is really 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 hard yeah and people don't tell you that and you know there's all you see is the gloss on top and I was talking to Annie about this day. Hi, Annie, Hi, who listens to this podcast. And this is partly why I was so tired. Lunatic. I was so broken after my private lesson earlier, which was amazing. Um, but, um, but yeah, we were talking about this earlier and how it's the same in the pole world. And, you know, you see the, the gloss and, the, and the, the shiny, shiny and the finished product. You don't see where you fall on your face. Mm -hmm. And you don't see the times when it doesn't work. And It's that old an analogy of, you know, swans and things, isn't it? They're gliding gracefully around and yeah. paddling like crazy. And icebergs, you know, the... the Business success is the tip of the iceberg. You don't see the 20 years of fucking yeah. hard graft underneath Sleepless it. Sleepless nights and panic. Yeah. So, and I, that was, you know, that's kind of what I want. That's kind of why I do what I do, really, because anyway, but I'll come to that in a bit. But, you know, that I decided that was all bullshit, basically, this this kind of feast and famine and stress and woe. Mm. <laughs> it's like nobody can live like that for very long. And I'd have to sort my shit out or get a job. And the idea of getting a job made me want to claw my own eyes out with a spoon because... Can you I, claw with a spoon? Well, I don't know. Because it's not that I'm unemployable, because I'm not, and it really pisses me off when people say they're unemployable, because it's like, well, then you're not going to do very well as a business owner, because you have to have that discipline. But what I don't want to do ever is work for somebody else to make them money mm -hmm. and to build their life and to follow their mission, which is... And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's not for me. I mean, you do that. I do that. And there's nothing wrong with it at all, but I... I, I you know, I, I think I'm pathologically unable to, to do it. So... <laughs> um, so that was totally out of the question. I couldn't go and get a job. So what was the alternative? Was taking control of my business and making a plan. Hmm. It's like, well, what do I want to do? 
And, you know, I've just kind of run through the plan and it was have live the life that we're was, living now. Yeah. And we're, we're a couple of steps into it now because we have the house and we have the chickens. Yeah. And the plumbing mostly works. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, we just need to find some more money so that the roof stays on and nothing falls down. Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the point of all this is that it's a plan and it's all mapped out and it might change and it's not to the minute detail and that the, the point is not getting it minutely detailed out because that would be boring. It's kind of, you know, it's like you said, it's a trend. Yeah. A trend in the, in the right direction. And generally, we know where we're going and that informs what I want to do with my business. And the other part of the plan is what I want my business to do in terms of helping people. So, you know, who do I want to help? How do I want to help them? Why do I want to help them? For how long? And all of that informs what I do to grow and run my business. So I don't just bumble along, despite appearances sometimes. <laughs> this is mostly pretty organised and planned. And, you know, it's, it's I'll change direction sometimes. But when I change direction, it's deliberate. Hmm. It's not and, and sometimes you will, you will knowingly try a tactic or a strategy, mm. um, fully aware that you're going to try four of these things and one or two of them might work. Yeah. In fact, usually only one of them will work and sometimes none of them work. Yeah. And that's the way it goes. And, you, you know, hope, you hope that it doesn't cost you too much actual upfront investment other than time, but sometimes it does and that's just the way it goes. So, you know, you kind of have to be willing to... You have to be a bit brave, I think, to run a business. Mm. You have to be a bit willing to... To take a kick in the teeth but most and most business owners they won't they won't do it they will continue to react to stuff i think partly because they don't realize there's an alternative yeah i mean i think people do calm down after a couple of years well they but, do but they still bounce from yeah whether they actually get some direction and traction and and you know progress yeah i don't know they're still being controlled by their businesses though rather than being in control in the driving seat mm. it's like they're working for their business when it should be the other way around their business should be working for them and that's the point and it's you know it's kind of a recipe for disaster or you know at the very least getting the same results that you've always got which for most people is the stress and the woe and the feast and the famine mm. just about scraping through yeah so i would like everyone listening to, i would like you dear listener to start with this because you have to start somewhere and it's where I started. What is important to you? Why do you want your business to succeed? Um, you know, money is nice and we can all roll around like Scrooge McDuck, but that's only fun for a little while. So, you know, at, at some point it's like, what do you want all the lovely money for? And for me, it's freedom. It's the freedom to live this life. It's the freedom to go traveling when I want. Mm -hmm. It's the freedom to say, you know what? I would like to buy that ridiculously overpriced thing. Or I would like to give this big lump of cash to that charity that's just made me bawl my eyes out, mm -hmm. which I have been known to do on occasion. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, what do you want the money for? And that's really important. Mm -hmm. So just, just, and you know, even if it's just making money for money's sake, then I'm not fucking judging. I like cash. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And if that's why, if it's a method of keeping score for you, then, you know, go for it. But I, what I will say is that I've read a lot of stories anecdotal mostly to be sure but people who chase the cash purely for the counting you know the keeping score sake they'll reach a point where it's just like i don't know what i'm doing with my life and that's where quite a lot of the you hear stories of like really successful business owners committing suicide yeah because they don't have a mission beyond having a little breakdown because all they're doing is yeah pointless. yeah <laughs> well not even that but they kind of reach the top the very top of whatever it is they're doing and then they think I've got nowhere else to go and suddenly their life is empty so mm. that's that's the danger of, of being very one-dimensional and that's why I think mapping out your business and your life plan together is really really important not setting it in stone yeah I mean I mean I'd, I'd imagine quite a lot of businesses are you know supply enough money to keep this family going or supply enough money so that we can afford to have a child or supply enough money so that we can take six months off every year yeah or whatever, whatever it is you might want to do. It's like Sean and Renuka. Uh, Sean Hi, Sean. From... Hi, <laughs> Hi, guys. Sean from Psychotactics. Um, they take three months off every year. Their podcast is called The Three Months Vacation, mm -hmm. which is great, by the way, and you should listen to it. Um, and that's the way they design their life. My mentor, Peter, my old mentor, Peter, um, he... Hey, Peter. Hi, Peter. <laughs> um, he plans at the beginning of every year he plans all his holidays in all his leisure time and then he plans his business around it yeah. what he's doing is speaking arrangements his training and all the, all the rest of it and so that's you know that's their version of a plan that's their mission and you know eventually my mission is going to change so that i can have three months off a year or more or more because you know there's a lot of world to see and um your interviewee who was it was dan kennedy last week ben settle ben settle ben settle 
he was he was saying you know he was spending 10 minutes a day working yeah that's a hell of a plan it is and you know he does other stuff as well yeah, but but the money making stuff that the, the email that he writes every day is 10 15 minutes a day that's his 10 minute work day and then he writes novels and he does trainings and he does fun. other things but yeah and you know that's an awesome life to have <laughs> and he also said very carefully it's taken me seven years to get to this point mm-hmm. so do not expect this to happen overnight for me this is still a massive work in progress sure and you know, I'm I'm not for a second pretending to be anywhere near where I want to be, but I'm a lot further ahead than I was, and a lot further ahead than I think most business owners. Yeah, and the, so. yeah, moving in the right direction. So yeah, and the the second part of that question. Which question? The starting with what's important to you. Oh, okay. So what's important to you personally, and why you want your business to succeed. The second part of that question is why you do what you do beyond to make a living. So. Um, for example, I see I see business owners struggling needlessly with growing their business, and I hate to see it because people have these amazing businesses and they're good people, and it's driving them into the ground. And so, you know, I want to help them in the same way that my mentors have helped me. Mm-hmm. It's kind of paying it forward. And yeah, I'm not a charity; I don't do it for free. But apart from these podcasts, <laughs> um, but that's that's what it's all about. It's kind of for me. That's what it's all about. And also on top of that, I love communication and psychology and how the brain works. It. I am fascinated by what I do, and I think that's really important as well, yeah. that you have to be fascinated by what you do. Not necessarily turning a hobby into a business, I think that can backfire, but for me, I absolutely love what I do. It's just interesting. You know, discovering people's buttons and how to push them so that they, you know, so that they act in such a way that, you know, in their best interest, not in my best interest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's why I do what I do. Why do you do what you do, Joe? Um, I quite enjoy, well, I enjoy, I enjoy solving problems. So I went into engineering and I I do I do problem solving. I get I get exposed to all kinds of cool technology and I go to lots and lots of different places where we do all kinds of cool clever shit. Good. Quite cool. enjoy it. Cool clever shit. Yeah. Who doesn't want to work with cool clever shit? And you do love what you do, don't you? It's, yes, I do. Good fun. In the main. I mean there's there's aspects of the job that I don't love, but there's uh, in the main, yeah, it's good fun. Well there's aspects of my job that I don't love. Yeah. But yeah, in the main, it's pretty cool. So, so yeah, once you've got all that nailed down, that's you've got to start there. You've got to start with what's important to you and why it's important and why you're doing what you do. Once you've got all of that nailed down, you can start thinking about all of the stuff that you do within your business and outside your business as well. So is what you are doing taking you closer to your mission? And, you know, sometimes the answer to that is, you know, just because it's fun <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> I'm now panicking about what my mission is. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've turned Joe into existential crisis. <laughs> I've got enough missions for both of us, don't worry. <laughs> um, no, seriously, though. You know, if, if, you're, if something you're doing is not taking you closer to your mission and it's not just for fun, then why are you doing it? Because you've you got to take that shit out of your life because it's just a waste of time. Hmm. Uh, somehow you've got to get it out, out of your life and your business. And um, I should also point out that, you know, some people are genuinely happy and content living a life that's been laid out for them. And there is... Nothing wrong with that at all. But they need to read more Heidegger. Well, maybe maybe they do. But he, no, you can't read Heidegger without falling asleep because whilst his ideas are fascinating, he was boring as hell. Was he? Yeah, his writing's dull. Oh. So read read somebody who has um, <laughs> summarized paraphrased <it>. paraphrased Heidegger. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's that's cool. We're, you know, it's it's fine to follow somebody else's path. It's fine to react to stuff. It's fine to kind of drift along in life if that if you're content. But you're those not, are not you're the not people. Not necessarily going to achieve things. No, but but that's that's fine as well. You know, not everybody is not everybody is entrepreneurial, and we are not podcasting for those people. Those those people are not going to be listening to this podcast. I wouldn't have thought. Probably not. No. The people that we're podcasting for are business owners. They're they're you guys. They're you, dear listener. And you know, if you own a business, you are almost by definition not somebody who drifts through life and reacts because otherwise you would have a job you would be working for the good of somebody else and that's not to say by the way that you can't go and work for a charity but the people who do that and have vocations like that generally have a mission because it's Mm -hmm. like you know what this is really important to me i want to save horses and the most efficient way of me to do that is to work for a charity that saves horses yeah or i want to be a neurosurgeon because i want to cure people of epilepsy or i want to be a heart surgeon yes it's unlikely they're going to be able to do that at least initially without working for a major government (laughs) exactly and you know lawyers and you know even engineers and you know people who work people who have a specific desire to to do something and you know that that requires 
intention, I guess, is what I'm saying. Mm. And, you know, I'm not saying that everybody who works for somebody else or has a job, a J-O-B, hasn't chosen that intentionally. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is that, you know, the the people listening to this podcast are going to be wanting to direct their own lives because they're business owners. And Mm. by the very definition, they wouldn't be business owners if they didn't want to direct their own lives. So with that in mind, you know, are you really living deliberately? Are you working deliberately with intention? You know, why are you doing what you do? Because if you are just bouncing from one thing to the other, then you might as well be working for somebody else because it's going to be really tough to build the life that you want. Hmm. And if you don't even know what the life that you want is, then... You need to figure that out. The drifting continues. And it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm going to finish the way I started. It doesn't have to be this massive life goal that never changes. Sure. It just has to be the next thing. Yeah, something something down the way a bit. Yeah. That you can aim at, drift yeah. towards. Absolutely. So, yeah. So what's your current mission, dear listener? Why are you doing what you do? Send us an email. Yeah, send me an email. I'm genuinely interested. And also tell me, are you getting there? Or do you feel like you're going around in circles and face planting into the floor regularly? Yeah, take a look at your business. And if it's still doing what it was doing a couple of years ago, then still doing the numbers you were doing a couple of years ago, still got the same problems you had a couple of years ago. You need to make a change. You've got to do something about that. Do you want to be same time next year with the same problems and the same numbers and the same challenges because that's crazy it's yeah. like it's einstein's definition unless, of crazy. unless your numbers are you know gajillions and yeah happy like everything's that, which, brilliant in which case carry on i don't really know why you're listening to this <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you know are you getting there if you're not getting there give me a shout because this is the kind of thing that i'm really good at helping with you know all, all of that fuzziness around your plans and your hopes and your dreams one of my strengths is looking at it from the outside and saying, well, you know what? There's a bunch of extraneous stuff over here that's not its not serving you. Mm. It's getting in your way. It's not helping. There's a bunch of stuff over here that's taking you in a different direction from what you've just told me you want to do. So, you know, I, it's not all going to be plain sailing. I will, I will never promise that because no business owner ever had a plain sailing business, I don't think. <laughs> you know, there's ups and downs. But we will get your business running intentionally and I can promise you that you will waste less time and after you put the groundwork in place you know you'll be less stressed you'll be less prone to being thrown around by the by the roller coaster that we're all on and what i want to do is get your business running smoothly so you've got a chance of predicting your income and making bigger profits and generally having a bit more bloody fun mm-hmm. and i'm i'm pretty good at that so i'm told sounds like a plan yeah it does sound like a plan doesn't it so next week i've got down um Oh, yeah, if you want to do that, by the way, I should probably tell you tell you where to go. Yeah, what, what do we do about this? <laughs> I just completely screwed up my really heartfelt call to action. Oh. Yeah, man. Um, businessforsuperheroes.com forward slash inner hyphen circle. Join us. Take a look. Join. Join my merry band of um, 30-odd, nearly 40-odd superheroes Crazy. now who are just doing amazing stuff. Mm. And- Tripling their income. In some cases, yeah. No, I, I cannot guarantee that anyone's going to triple their income, but um, Jill did because she's a fucking rock star. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. <laughs> um, and hi to all of my other superheroes as well, because you guys, I'm so fucking proud of you. I don't tell you this often enough, I don't think. But, you know, you're all getting on with it and you're doing stuff, and especially the ones who are doing my challenges every month, mm. getting stuff done and doing it so well and being open to criticism. And when I say criticism, I mean in the true sense of the word, you know, the feedback and improvements and being willing to try it again yeah and you know try it better so yeah you guys rock anyway next week i don't know what we're talking about next week to be honest um because i've got from the last one we're going to talk about the importance of follow-up in the long game so who the hell knows what we'll be talking about next week (laughs) might be that might be something else i think oh i did have a bit of a plan actually on trello um what 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 have i got what have i got what have i got we have got I've got motivational bollocks written down. So motivational next week, motivational bollocks. Next week, motivational bollocks. Tune in, folks. You don't want to miss out on motivational bollocks. <laughs> Have a splendid week. Be good. If you can't be good, don't get caught. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast. <laughs>